The plane behind me is fitted with some awesome technology that helps make it rain. And today, we're doing just that. Natural disasters have quadrupled since 1970, destroying homes and wrecking cities, like we saw in the 2025 California wildfires or the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. This is mostly because of climate change. Right across the Indian Ocean it came, a roaring, pounding shock wave. But what if we could control the weather? From manipulating tornadoes... To simulating earthquakes, geoengineering is human intervention of the Earth's biological systems. Holy cow. We're looking at how humans are intentionally changing the Earth, and I'm in Abu Dhabi going to go inside cloud seeding and seeing if we can help make it rain in one of the driest places on Earth. First, I wanted to understand our flight path and debunk some myths about cloud seeding. So this is the radar image. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one of the previous cases that we get. You can see the colors here identify the intensity of rainfall. The yellow line, if you can see here, this yellow line is, is actually the track uh, or telemetry that we use to track where the pilot is. Oh. So this is the pilot position, as okay. you can see here. So our takeoff is actually happening from this area. This is mm. Alain. What are some uh, misconceptions or myths that are wrong about cloud seeding? Um, I guess uh, some people th uh, just think that cloud seeding is actually to make rainfall happen or for example to cause storms to happen which is not true. Uh, the idea is just to try to increase rainfall and it's just a few percentages. It's around 10 to 15 percent in our environment, the dusty environment. And what, what is the main goal if you were to simplify the goal of of cloud seeding to try to increase the or recharge the underground water which will be very useful to try to help not just the uae but other countries who are facing uh, water scarcity as well the uae has one of the lowest rates of rainfall in the world at 7.8 centimeters per year it's less than a tenth of the global average which is 100 centimeters to make matters a lot worse the uae's water consumption rate is one of the highest in the world at 550 liters per person daily. It's more than three times the global average of 170 liters per person daily. But what exactly is cloud seeding? It's a scientific process that originated back in 1946 in the US. The aim is to use science to literally help make it rain. Clouds are basically made from a bunch of water droplets or ice crystals that are light enough to float in the sky. The droplets can then join together and become heavier, causing them to fall as rain. By releasing different kinds of salts into the clouds, scientists can make those droplets bigger and heavier. Cloud seeding isn't the only type of weather modification. Scientists have even started thinking of ways to manipulate tornadoes to make them less powerful. We have a confirmed Take tornado the on the ground. Using lasers to discharge lightning in storms, which are more likely to become hurricanes. There's even a way of pumping colder deep ocean water in front of tropical storms to cool the sea surface. So where is the plane that we're going to be flying today? It's over there. <laughs> All right. I think you're going to feel the turbulence on that one, right? Hello, hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Sergi and uh, Anders. Anders. Tell me about these flares. This is what makes it rain. These number one flares here, Yeah. they are flares which are called hygroscopic flares. They uh, burn for about uh, three or four minutes. They produce larger particles which water droplets latch onto okay. which then produce rain. Uh, these number two here, they are the newer flares, they're referred to as nano flares. Uh, it is nanotechnology, the word nano as you know means something which is very very small. Okay. Uh, and these use a basically pure salt but it is much much smaller particles and when you fire them they just go poof and they leave a dust cloud inside of the rain cloud and then it's water molecules they attach to these okay. uh, particles. But literal salt, like could you season your steak with it? Uh, no, you couldn't. It's not really the same thing. <laughs> okay. uh, it's not entirely healthy, but it is also not dangerous. So what's actually in these flares? Well. There's 70% potassium chloride, 13% sodium chloride, and 5% magnesium. These three are all basically just variations of salt. Once the plane reaches the right altitude, the flares get deployed from underneath the cloud. You know the turbulence you feel on a plane when it flies in and around clouds? 
Well, that's what it's gonna feel like for most of this flight. It then takes no more than a couple of hours for the water to fall down as rain. And hopefully that's exactly what we're gonna see happening later. Let me understand how the flares work. So I'm seeing these kind of, I think these are just electrical cables. Is, that, is this what lights it up? These... This is what lights it up. So all the flares are similar in the sense that uh, inside of the flare, there's a small powder charge, right? Okay. Which is electrically ignited. Okay. Uh, the electrical wires goes through here. It's a yeah. positive and negative. It comes through the rack here, up through the wing. You can see the connection there. And it goes into the fuselage. And then there's a little control box inside of the airplane, which you will see later. Geoengineering isn't only about weather. Did you know humans can even create earthquakes? The first earthquake machine was invented by Nikola Tesla and called Tesla's Oscillator, which he claimed caused an earthquake in New York in 1898. The modern equivalent of Tesla's earthquake machine is called the T-Rex Mobile Shaker, and it's basically a massive truck designed to shake the ground below it. It can shake the ground in three different directions with up to 27 tons of force. That's the weight of eight Hummers. The T-Rex is an essential tool for earthquake scientific research and for testing infrastructure. Scientists are also studying ways to simulate volcanic eruptions to understand lava flows. Luckily for now, these have only happened in the lab, with scientists creating lava with special machines. These aim to help predict future eruptions and plan for safer evacuations. They must have been told by the government, get everybody out of wherever you are. Probably the oldest method of geoengineering is one that humans have been using since the early 1900s. Explosive avalanche control. Sounds pretty scary, but this technique reduces the risk of avalanches by triggering them under controlled conditions, helping prevent larger, more dangerous avalanches from happening without warning. Oh. What? So the fire controls uh, are down here. That is the entire control of uh, the flare racks on the outside. Is that, is that red fire button literally how you shoot the, uh, the flares? That is correct. BIP stands for burn in place. I will uh, move this selector here uh, to the R1 position. And then I have another selector for each individual flare. With everything precisely calculated for the cloud seeding process weeks in advance, the team has to make sure everything is perfectly aligned and ready for the big moment when the flares are released into the clouds. They meticulously check the plane and gear to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. Ner nerves are setting in a little bit, you know. Uh, whenever we do something really new, as a supercar blindly, I'm excited but there's always that little aspect of like, let's see what happens. I don't know what to expect. Uh, this is the calm before the storm. Oh boy, no going back. already feel a little bit the turbulence because it's a smaller plane but there's no going back now I mean we're doing this step one reach the correct altitude oh man here it is that's a big juicy cloud step two circle the cloud to check the conditions are right so right where we are now there's a little bit of an updraft they would look at their radar screens and together with our information that we give them and the information they have already from advanced computer systems, uh, they would determine if this is a cloud uh, that could be useful to seed or not. Step three, get into position under the cloud ready to deploy. Rain, 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 rain. So basically ground control told us that we're ready to shoot flares. We found a cloud with enough moisture. He's already triggering it. And uh, I think we're ready, yeah, whenever you want. This side, right? Step four, fire away. Oh yeah, there it goes. Oh, you can even hear it pop. That is awesome. It looks like, like an afterburner. Incredible. Wow. I'm doing the cloud seeding. We found a cloud. 
I'm going to press the fire button, but first we've got to set it up. Look, I'm going to switch it over to R1, like that. And I'm going to put this down to three. Like that. And I'm going to press fire. You ready? Three, two, one, fire. Six. Fire. Seven. Seven. Fire. Eight. Eight. Fire. Nine. Nine. Fire. Look at this. Flames. All right, one thing that uh, we didn't really, or I didn't at least consider was uh, that there's no bathroom in here. So uh, I drank a ton of water before going up on the plane uh, and I got to go. And basically to use the bathroom, he's got to call ground control and get permission. Uh, I guess because they weren't, they weren't thinking that anyone would need the bathroom, but that is apparently the seat. I mean, you lift that up and it's a toilet, but I, <laughs> oh, I, I can't do that. But this is your personal cup, right? Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> don't worry about it. Oh man, I don't. I feel so bad doing this. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm a. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. A, maybe. A, maybe like a bottle or something. All right. See ya. <laughs> this is a, a different kind of cloud seating. <laughs> All right. This is the last round of seating. We found the perfect cloud. You can see we have a few flares left. We're gonna go to the front. Fire. And that's the day. Hopefully, it'll help it rain. Now, I was expecting some turbulence, but I did not think it would be like this. Whoa! Wow! You can see, like, from the back of the fires, you can see, like, a little trail of, like, it's, like, very light sparks and I don't know if that's the salt or just the pieces of paper flying off but you can literally see a trail. It was now time to see whether our seeds helped the clouds produce rain. I feel like Gabby and Storm Chasers but maybe on a smaller scale than that. We're done. Touchdown. Mission complete. Take a look. Wow. So yeah, these are the two different types. So you can see that some of them burned off like that all the way down to the, to the beginning. And then these ones just kind of popped and released. And look, you can still see the little salt in there. Yeah. There it is. Crazy. Are you seeing this? Rain. Oh, it's picking up too. It's raining. We did it. Here, you can like feel the little. Look at that. I think we helped with that one. We've not only seen how cloud seeding works from the skies, but we've also gotten a peek into the future of engineering. From controlling weather to tackling challenges like avalanches and even mitigating earthquakes, these innovations are shaping how we interact with nature. <laughs>